So Mark Commode, it's laughed six <laughs> times and it's a comedy. Yeah. But the amount of broken bones. Does that mean that? Have you? Do you guys know about the film Raw? You've ruined that film for me. I genuinely think you've right. ruined that film. Spielberg made Ready Player One. Spielberg could not make a film like Batman and Robin. <laughs> it, it, he could... It's not wrong. It's not wrong that statement. Hello and welcome to Every Movie Ranked, brought to you by the Angry Microwave. On this show, what we do is pretty simple. We're trying to rank every movie ever made. Is it going to work? Probably not. Um, but Callum, how are you doing today? Are you well? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. But more importantly, we're joined by comedian extraordinaire David Hall. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was, was that I was too fine much? With comedi- I, I was fine with comedian, but the word extraordinaire. I'll take it. Thank you so much. Sorry, let's start that again. Thank you so much, Callum. It's really nice to be here. Thank you, Brad. Uh, this is a marvellous and also ridiculous idea for a podcast <laughs> and i'm so on board <laughs> thank you for having me i mean yeah like you're kind of like an early adopter of this like you'll be setting the standard of where the list is at so <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah i'm so glad we've got you on to set that standard it's good and you uh yeah the whore standard is probably not what you wanted from the <laughs> podcast but that's what you're getting so yeah uh, shall we um yeah so we'll show you the list and kind of let, let us know what you think so this is the list so far that we've got <laughs> So and Brad. this is a list that you haven't seen before, I believe. Um, obviously, you've only just uh, hopped on uh, hopped on to the show. Um, so, so far, yeah. uh, in our first episode, Cam and I ranked five movies. Um, we have Mission Impossible Fallout uh, at number one, Happy Death Day at number two, Midsummer at number three. Uh, fourth place, we have Ready Player One. And uh, at the bottom, we have Hubie Halloween. Um, now, one thing we like to do on this show is give our special guests the power to move one of those films <laughs> up or down the list um i'm a bit worried as to what's going on inside your head at the moment um so david what are you thinking is there anything that you'd like what's to going show? on inside my head <laughs> yeah. is is that exterior that like to, to this change? podcast or just yeah. generally um i haven't seen any of these films oh, so <laughs> um interesting things about some of these films i want to know what hubie halloween is but i'm sure 2020 Don't. this year how do you not know it's the adam sandler halloween masterpiece <laughs> that was on netflix Oh, that's all I need to know, because <laughs> I haven't really seen an Adam Sandler film since... What's the hip-hop... What's the one where Rob Schneider can't spell hippopotamus? All of them. Daddy! Big Daddy! <laughs> I've seen that one. Uh, but that was probably two... It might have been a millennia ago. Um, no, yeah, sorry. No opinion yeah. to move that but list. That's, that's I could the... do it just to be <laughs> mad, but it's fine. No, please, I, I won't. Please don't move Hubie Halloween any higher than the bottom place. <laughs> I feel like some of my opinions on this podcast uh, are going to rock the boat later on. So I'm going to like go in smooth. And... <laughs> well, that's we... fine. Yeah, everything's fine. Just try and make people like me first <laughs> before I say horrific things. <laughs> Well, that's the great thing about the concept of the show, we think, is that it's trying to put together a, a list just with your own opinions is difficult, but trying to actually fight against other people's opinions, uh, no matter how wrong you think they are, it's a collaborative list and mm. no one could possibly go wrong. <laughs> and so with that being said, should we go to the first movie of the day, Callum? Yeah, so we've got Wayne's World. So Yes, so this is a film, um, just to explain to the people at home as well, we like to let the guests bring one uh, one film to the table. And David, this was your uh, recommendation, I believe, um, for today's show. So I'm interested to see um, what you think about this film. Should we let David go first, Callum? Let's go, David. Are you starting the timer now? Okay, great. Uh, Wayne's World is my favourite movie of all time. Uh, I think it's hilarious. It is pure comedy. It's not like... There's some drama, but there's some comedy. It's just out and out laughs all the way through. Uh, It's basically two very, very positive guys being positive all the time. Uh, And that's just wonderful, even though (laughs) the stuff around them is bizarre. The cast is great. You've got Rob Lowe, uh, obviously uh, Dana Carvey and Mike Myers. Uh, The jokes are just snappy. There's loads of jokes all the time. So if you didn't like the last joke, you'll like the next one. Um, It's uh, kind of... I think the comedy is timeless. You can just laugh at it. You don't have to be like, oh, this is dated. Uh, But uh, it is very much a like window into a weird period of time (laughs) where like public access television, you could just make a TV yourself, but that's become YouTube now. (laughs) Uh, But I just think it's absolutely hilarious and it should be number one. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Brad, do you want to go? Yeah. Um, Is it a comedy? Um... 
Because, <laughs> so, um, so I, I I watched this film uh, once about ten years ago. Um, I think, and then when you brought this to the to the uh, table, um, I watched it again last night. Um, it's interesting that you say that if you don't like uh, one joke, there's another one coming up that you will enjoy, and that I do agree with. Um, <laughs> it's probably not the the hardest I've laughed at a film. Um, it's not my favourite comedy, but. I, I I I can't imagine anyone watching this and not laughing at anything. For me, the the dialogue isn't particularly funny. Like the the jokes aren't funny, but how they're delivered and just Mike Myers, it, anything he does makes me laugh. And the two leads in this film, they are funny. And sometimes I did find myself thinking, why why this is so ridiculous? Why am I laughing? But that's probably why <laughs> because, like you say, it's just just such an outright comedy that it doesn't try mm. to be anything else. Um, and I guess I appreciate it, but. Is it going to be number one? We'll yes. find out in a minute or so. <laughs> yeah, so I, I kind of adore this film too. It's just like, I'm, I'm a big fan of SNL. I like, I always watch it whenever it comes out. It's very much of that vein. It's just stupid. There's lots of kind of like meta breaking before Deadpool got all the credit of doing meta stuff when this was kind of like already <laughs> doing it in the 90s. Mm. It seems absolutely insane that this film came out in the 90s though. Like I thought it was way earlier than that, but I think it was 92. It's, mm. yeah. Um, I, I just love it. Like the Bohemian Rhapsody scene was an instant classic. Like the amount of times you see that just pop up everywhere. I mean, I'm sure that'd be a TikTok trend soon as well, probably. You, <laughs> you just imagine it, can't you? Like everyone getting all their friends, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it is just timeless. It's just stupid fun. Um, yeah, and yeah, and Mike Myers just absolutely brings it. I'm I'm thinking it should be above Happy Death Day and below Mission Impossible Fallout, but Brad's about to lose his shit. But I feel like <laughs> we'll get the majority vote on this, David, if you want to make a coup, and we can we can force this into number two. So yeah. Okay. So, all right, let's have a chat, lads. Um, <laughs> let's so, have a chat whilst he rubs so, his eyes. Okay. Yeah. This is actually the first comedy that we uh, first comedy that we have on the mm -hmm. list, which I think is interesting. Um, the idea behind a comedy, same as a horror. If you if you don't find a horror scary or engaging, you're not going to enjoy the movie. I can't mm -hmm. say I didn't enjoy the film because I laughed. Uh, and if we're going by Mark Commode's list of if you laugh six <laughs> times, it's a great comedy. I, I laughed six times in the first act of this film. So clearly, is that his genuine rule? <laughs> pretty sure that's what he says. Yeah. If you laugh six times in a movie, then he classes it as a good comedy. So does that mean in time is a comedy? Because I laughed over six <laughs> times. <as> well. <laughs> well, that could also mean that another movie we're talking about a little bit later could be. Uh, uh, I mean, mm, that would also make Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker also a comedy by by that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, um, but I, I I don't know. It's it for me. It's not a better movie than in Mission Impossible Fallout. But Definitely. as we'll we'll get to when it comes to either Callum or myself talking about our favourite films, it's hard to tell someone that their favourite film isn't the greatest <laughs> film of all time. I mean, that's that's the whole thing about having a. I sh you sure? I mean, I'm very much a person that like this is my favourite film. I don't. Right. <laughs> I I could happily have somebody say it's not their favourite film, and right. I'm not going to go. This is the favourite film. But for the purposes of this podcast, number one all the way, I will walk <laughs> off this podcast if you <laughs> change it. Uh, I just. It's just a happy film. You put it on, yeah. you're not gonna, it's not kind of like, well, we tried to make you laugh, but we also tried to make you think. It's like, we just tried to make <laughs> you laugh. It's just balls to the wall. It's exactly what it intends to be. Uh, it really delves into, uh, uh, a, 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 I don't know if it's like guys the right word. It, it delves into like a culture at the time. They're kind of rockers who are just past the cusp. <laughs> Like grunge is happening, but they're still like listening to hair metal and playing Jackson guitars, and it kind of like really leans into their all the headbanging scenes, as you said, Callum are amazing, just so <laughs> obscure and weird and just designed to do nothing but just make you happy. And, and that's the crazy thing. I think it's a film that certainly is of its time, but it's also a perfect film for the 2020s so far, I think. Um, because we, we don't necessarily get um, comedies that are, like you say, comedies now try and make you think or they'll have the beginning of the third act be about the heartbreak and, and things like that. This is just as purely about how, how ridiculous can we go. And for me, the funniest scene, and I think it's an actually testament to the movie, my favourite scene is when they're on the hood of the car um, and the guy's whistling and it's clearly not him whistling and the plane just comes overhead. Like It's just pure joy. Like You just mm -hmm. wouldn't see that um, in a film Did now. Did you know... Uh the director she um 
uh, took that before they were actually uh, recording the actual scene. Garth was just making not Garth Dana Carvey was making Mike Myers laugh, <laughs> and they were they were recording it whilst they were setting it up, and so she took the audio of his actual genuine laugh and put it in the scene when he was making him laugh just to make it sound more genuine. No, funnily enough, actually, I thought that when I watched it last night, I thought when he's laughing, that's clearly, he's he's not necessarily re- um, reacting to what we're seeing, but that is a, such a genuine mm. belly, mouth open, eyes closed laugh. Um, that it's, the... it's, things, it's things like that that are just, that are just like a joy to watch, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I think the other thing about this film as well is I'm a massive Lonely Island fan and I feel like without Wayne's World, there would be no pop star Never Stop Never Stopping. Like, I feel <laughs> I feel like Wayne's will kind of set the way for that film to exist in, in just being like silly and basically having a pace of having like loads and loads of skits in, into one film. I feel like that wouldn't have existed without Wayne's World personally. Yes, and it was also made at like a frenetic pace where apparently they were like, leaving SNL in costume, jumping in a limo and then being driven <laughs> to the airport, I think, to then fly to make it because they probably made in LA, I think. But yeah, it's just made like in such a snappy like uh, pace that you, it just kind of barrels forward. I don't think they kind of sat and tried to perfect anything. They just sort of did it. Like the whole part of the reason why they spend the whole of the film when you're saying like it's just really silly and weird I think one of the most hilarious things about the film is just the gestures that they move around in (laughs) and apparently one of the reasons that they like just move around so stiffly is because they all damage their necks doing the Bohemian Rhapsody (laughs) uh, head banging scene and therefore they just had to like move like George Clooney spoilers for later in this podcast but they could because they couldn't move their necks and so it just makes it more like yeah I think modern day films that probably like stopped filming for six weeks while they all rested, yeah. but they were like, okay, this is just part of the film now. I will be really interested to see where you think Wayne's World 2 will come, but let's not go on to that. We maybe get you back on and you can maybe place that into this because because uh, Wayne's World 2 <laughs> is a very unique film following this. Let's just say that. Sure. I can give you my very, very, very brief thing, which is this film is joke, 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 joke. <laughs> and Wayne's World 2 is like, here is a very dramatically set up joke and here is a dramatically set up joke and here is dramatically set up. like it's less it's less fast paced but everything is like designed to like just fall like just it's basically like a big like domino thing where just stuff just like falls into place so more importantly where, where are we all going to agree that this that this film should go on this list i okay so i'll i'll clearly i, I don't love this movie as much as as you two but that mm-hmm. said i'm happy to put it in the second place spot, okay. do you think it's a better movie than Mission Impossible Fallout? No. I'm going to have to defer to Callum. Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me, uh, this is my main question about that film, which number Mission Impossible is it? Seven. Six. Seven. Six. You both, you, one of you said six and one of you said seven. It's, it's six. Okay, six. Are you sure? Yeah, they're making seven at the moment because oh. she's shouting at everyone for not wearing masks, isn't he? <laughs> no, is he? Um, yeah. Is this one of the ones where Tom Cruise has been like, I'm going to do all my yes. own stunts he now? He learned, okay, he learned to fly a helicopter and then basically stall it in a fucking canyon. And he had to go to like New Zealand because no one else would insure him to do that apart from in New Zealand. He also broke his foot in the film. You can see the breaking of the foot happen and they keep that shot in. Um, so it's he falls raw. out of a helicopter. It's, it's a great film. <laughs> let's just say um, how many bones did, <laughs> did michael myers break for wayne's world <laughs> if we're using that to well he seized his back up <laughs> he seized his back did up, he break but... it though did he break it that's what i'm looking for broken bones <laughs> is that your so mark commode it's laughed six times and it's a comedy yeah but the amount of broken bones does that mean that, have you do you guys know about the film raw no, I thought I thought you guys say the crow and go very dark. <laughs> oh no, I don't know about that, and let's not talk about that or the Twilight Zone movie. But um, uh, there's a film called Raw, which I'm now realizing I should have put that on the list uh, just just to make you two watch it. But uh, it's all about this guy who put Tippi Hendren from the Birds and her husband, and they set up a lion colony because uh, they weren't allowed to keep. Uh, 
big cats in their garden anymore because the police said so they just set up a ranch where they put all the big cats and then filmed a film and on the advert it's like no animals were harmed in the making of this film but 77 members of cast and crew were <laughs> so <laughs> does that mean Callum that that is going to be the best film ever no but pure yeah. entertainment you go into that film thoroughly you can't go in wanting entertainment you come out thoroughly entertained uh so yeah obviously high numbers i can't argue because i've not seen mission impossible 2 <laughs> well, um, hey, Callum and i were, were saying this in the uh, first episode of this when we were ranking those five movies that there's a there is a massive gulf between mission impossible fallout and perhaps the rest of the movies on that list so mm-hmm. i think to put wayne's world at number two it's very much in the top tier and it will be going forward compared to the rest of the films that are probably going to slowly start um slipping <laughs> Who is on this podcast next and who do I need to petition to move this list? Like, because I need to go petition the person that's on next to move it one space up. We don't that's have them booked yet. So... <laughs> yeah. so are you going to now come back on? You do. Just so... You just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to say. Okay. Well, my vote's number one, but if your vote's both for number two, then I will be overruled. Well, I'll give Callum the deciding vote. Um, I'm hey, Callum, I'll say buddy. number two. <laughs> So it's We've worked together so much this year. Think about how this is the oh, greatest movie of all time. It, Think it, about it, how it, happy it makes me. And it needs to go and... number two, surely. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, like, number one. If, number one. The thing is, if, if you come back on, then you can change it. Okay. If you come back on, you can change it. Okay. Can I and be the second guest guests. on this podcast? Please? <laughs> be the quickest <laughs> returning guest we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go and take a look at the list. <laughs> so now, on to right. Soul. I'm really intrigued by what you think Soul is, because I I sent you this list over, and I was like, surely we need a stinker of a film, and you went, just wait till I come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to go first? I have had many heated arguments in the past four days about this okay so right i loved this movie until i didn't um it handles jazz a million times better than whiplash it has an amazing cast it has an amazing score uh nine inch nails doing the ambient stuff is amazing the animation style is awesome the difference between the real life stuff and the um I don't even know what you'd call it, the soul world. It's brilliant. And then it becomes a body swap movie. Yawn. Big yawn. Big, 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 big yawn. Body swap movies are so boring. I do not like them. As soon as that happened, I was like, well, I can tell exactly what's going to happen in this movie. She's going to do some stuff weirdly. She's going to encounter some people that he knows, but eventually they're going to learn from each other. Yawn. And so I just turned off. I stopped watching. Okay, Brad. <laughs> oh, I love how you pass that over to me now. Okay. Um, best movie of the year, I think. Um, I'd, I, no, it's not. It's probably top three for me, though. I'd, I, I love the messages in this movie. Um, I do agree slightly with the whole body swap when that happened. I was like, well, this is going to take up a whole act of the movie that I'm, I'm not interested in, especially because up until that point with the real world and then the before and after world, I, I love what they were setting up with that. Um, and unfortunately, that as soon as they swapped bodies, I kind of agree with you. I kind of saw how he was going to learn how he could have lived his life or what was actually important, this, that and the other. We won't go into spoilers because it has only just come out, but um, it's... It, it... <sighs> I don't know. I just, I think it's got so much charm. I love the lessons learned in this movie. Um, maybe me saying this is one of the best movies of the year doesn't say much, considering I think we had what three films come out this year. Um, but I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's I, in the top three films that came out this year. <laughs> also, um, one of the three films. Sorry. <laughs> well, my, that's 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 my time. Callum. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I absolutely love this film, but now you said it's a body swap movie, it's kind of tarnished it for me. I never thought of it as that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I came in thinking like easily number one or two, but now you mentioned the body swap stuff. I totally see that I was basically being fleeced and basically sold a film I wasn't particularly thought it was. Um, I didn't really enjoy it though. I absolutely love jazz, like like well jazz films, like basically anything Damon Chazelle's done, like La La Land, Whiplash. Um, but yeah, I I mean the voice acting was great in this. I I, I thought that really stood out. Like Jamie Fox 
e even Graham Norton was great. Like, I thought Graham Norton was kind of like yeah. a stunt cast, as it normally is, like we normally get some local person. But I didn't realise he was in every version of the film. I think he absolutely smashes it. Like, he like he literally sounds like a full-on voice actor, which I wasn't expecting. And also, it looks great. So where I think it should go... I think it's top three. I don't know where on that top three list, though, for me so far. So, yeah. Okay, so... The one th I'm going back to the body swap thing now because I'm kind of caught up on this, which I wasn't, you know, <laughs> didn't even think about it until two minutes ago. But here we are. This is um, this is every conversation I've had with everybody I've spoken to about it so cool. far, and they're like, "Come on, David," and I'm like, "Okay, come at me, come at me, come on." <laughs> the one thing that I I didn't like about the body swap, the, the whole learning lessons from each other thing, I just think it would have been, and we're not here to say how we thought films um, should have been made, um, but why did he have to get <laughs> hats? Like I understand that would have meant, that meant that he couldn't actually have conversations with with people, but I would have thought that surely it would have been more in, more impactful if he'd yeah he's watching the the whole interaction between him and his mom, but he's not actually the one that's having that interaction. Um, even though they kind of they do that that clever um, like pan behind the mom, and then suddenly it's it's his voice that's talking. But let's not forget that really during the whole conversation when the mom was having the emotional breakthrough with her son, she would have been hearing <laughs> in the background the whole time, because obviously he's he's telling the kid, that was meant to be a cat, by the way. Um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, I, I just, I think it would have been more beneficial, surely, if he went back to like being uh, like a child or something like that, because then you've got a child in an adult's body and you've got an adult in a child's body. <laughs> I, I don't know, but you know, could a grown man be walking around with a kid in New York? Probably not, or wherever it's that. I also but don't really like cats, so also minus points for Amazing. Cats. If it was a dog. I thought I was going to say divisive things this podcast, <laughs> and then you're like, I just don't like cats. Wow. <laughs> if it was so, a yeah. dog, maybe it could have been number one, but being a cat is just... Down the day me. before I watched this, my best friend posted on Twitter that this was the best Pixar film he'd ever seen, and it was better than all other Pixar films, and you can take whichever Toy Story number you put at the end of your favourite Pixar film and shove it up your whatever. But And I was like, okay, so it's got a positive review, that's fine. I'm quite good at <laughs> taking somebody else's opinion before going to a thing and just kind of going, whatever, that's fine. I went in very neutral. And then I loved it. And this is the real, I think this is the real crux of how disappointed I am in the film is that it went, it, like I started neutral and I went up, 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 up. And everything was just ticking boxes and ticking boxes. It was hilarious. The conversations he's had with his mum about getting a real job are the exact conversations I've had with my mum. It was like hitting home. Uh, Questlove as an actual drummer in a movie. <laughs> <Mwah. laughs> Graham Norton's performance. You're... Is so good and so unexpected. Richard Iwadi being there is great. The yep. wire hanger things were great. The, the 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 fact that you were just like, oh, this is all going well, and then it went so far off a cliff. His life going, basically dying. You're like, what? Like it wasn't just kind of like, oh, there's some inconveniences. Like that is a big inconvenience. <laughs> it was just going, it was just ticking every box, and I was like, where are they gonna go with this? And I was so excited. And then just as they were falling down, and then as soon as it became a body swap movie, my brain just was like, oh, this is a tired, exhausted genre of film where I know exactly what's gonna happen. Not just film, but TV shows, and probably more TV shows is what I've seen. But if you go look on the Wikipedia page for body swap uh in media the list is long yeah thinking about it like the good place did this better <laughs> in many ways sure. like and yeah. it's probably not the whole crux of the what's happening next right in the good place there's a lot more going on but that is like it's just that then and you're like oh okay and yeah uh, so yeah it genuinely is more born out of disappointment for that but having said that a lot of people i've spoken to have been like well i quite like body swap films and i'm like it is basically like i don't eat cheese very much i don't i can eat pizza but i don't really eat cheese and when cheese is put in stuff it just turns me off i don't like that i bought a falafel wrap recently and it had <laughs> cheese in it that i didn't know about and it made me immediately dislike that and so it's obviously very personal to me that that particular flavor of film i don't like but i really 
just, well, I just... I've, I've got two things to, to, to kind of go off, not go off on, I'm not going to go at you now. Um, I've got two Let's things go. to respond to, to what you just said, and believe it or not, they're not cheese related. Um, but, um, the, fir- the first thing I'd say is that you say that this, this isn't the best Disney Pixar uh, movie. Um, this isn't the best um, Disney Pixar movie that Pete Doctors directed, because he also directed Monsters, Inc. and Up, which I both think are better films. But as much as I didn't like the the middle of this film, I loved the whole, he spent his entire life um, wanting to achieve this one thing, and he's on the cusp of it, but he's left it too late, and now no one's believed in him, and he's never got a chance to fulfil his dream. And what what's his afterlife going to look like? I was actually fascinated by that concept. Um Mm-hmm. And you know, granted, we're three white guys trying to get into the entertainment industry anyway, so we can relate to all of those messages about um, about our parents telling us to actually get proper jobs and not just sit in front of our computers all day. Um, but I, I I did love the the first act, and I loved the the finale. I loved the lessons learned in this movie. I loved that he's come to you know. Again, I won't go into spoilers, but I, I did love the third act. It is just the middle uh, the middle part of the film that does lay it down because. It didn't need to be a body swap movie. Surely watching his life or what could have been his life unfold from above is, is just as impactful as him being a cat. Um, <laughs> but that, said, that said, I did it 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 did really take me on, on a, an emotional roller coaster. Um, but if we're talking about a comedy needs to do its job by making us laugh. And a film like this needs to do its job by creating an emotional connection. That connection was temporarily lost in the middle act of the film. And for that reason, I don't think you can put it above Wayne's World, really. Um, if this yeah. goes above Wayne's World, I'm kicking it. <laughs> so I'm feeling number three for this film. Okay. Which is fascinating. Show me, show me, the, show me the lift again. Which is fascinating because before this came on, I was like, surefire, it's going to be like Mission Impossible or it's going to be right below it. But you've, yeah. you've, you've ruined this film for me, David. You've ruined this yeah. film for no, me. You know Welcome what? to me talking about <laughs> films. This is <laughs> why I thought it was hilarious you got me for this podcast because <laughs> I have some violent opinions about films and uh, people... I've been told by many of my closest friends that I am horrific to watch films with. <laughs> Like really bad to watch films. Oh, with. David, uh, if it makes you feel better, you're also horrific to rank movies with. So great, <laughs> so so funny to so, me because there are films that I adore, and there are many films that I really adore. But if you, they, I'm pretty much got hips to taste of Ghibli and uh, what's the Grand Budapest Hotel man called? Was Anderson. Where's Anderson? I am in that category of like unexpected, interesting, exciting films. And this is part of the reason why I don't like Soul as much. And I think it should go bang in the middle because the first half of it is great. And I would disagree with you, Brad. I don't think that the third act recovers because it's too much okay. trying to sort everything out. It definitely goes back up and there are definitely bits of it that are awesome. And there's so much going for it. There's so many big ticks, but... It, I would say let's just slap this bang in the middle because it is not the worst film ever, right. but it's not the best film ever. No, I think it needs to go number three. I think it's better than Happy Death Day, though. Mm. Okay, but now this was, this was going to go top for me. Um, <laughs> what have I'm you actually done, sweating. David? What have you done? I'm actually sweating. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the problem with this now, though, is we're going to get guests coming on. They're going to be like, why the fuck is Soul number three? And then we'll have to explain, well, it's like a body swap movie and we didn't really yeah. get this until David's came just, on. Just, just send them my way and I'll... I'll, I'll I mean, I, I, I dissuade you in a minute. Just send them my way. I The problem is, if we're going if we're going to the list, because we do need mm-hmm. to, to rank it. Do it. I, I mean, David wants this to be as low down as possible. Um, which No, I don't. I don't <laughs> want it to be as low down as possible. I want it to be in the middle as possible, because it's right. not the worst film ever, and there's well, so much going for it, but it isn't... As soon as I watched it, I went and kept on looking at people saying, like, film of the year in the best list films of the year, and I was like, all these people I mean... either like body swap movies or aren't affected by them in the same way that I am. It's also 2020, Which... so it's basically, is it better than Sonic? It's basically the argument, but is it the best film of the year? Um, sure. But, but it's better than Sonic. Um, you don't have to watch Sonic to know that, but it is. Um, but if you go by, <laughs> by, by our list, the, the key question yeah. here is, is it better 
than um, than Midsummer. I'd say it is. I do think the, the pacing's better. Midsummer is a great film, but I do think it can go on a little too long. It's a bit long in the tooth. Is it better than Happy Death Day? That's what I'm having trouble with because I love that movie more than most. And people that have seen both of those movies will probably say it's crazy to put Happy Death Day above it. But after what David said, I'm having a real tough time. Um, also, if with Summer to you, it sounds like it was good and then it slowly dissipated. Hmm. Whereas this was good and then the middle <laughs> went bad and then picked up again. And it's like, where's your... Because hmm. it's like going to see a band where like at the front they play hits and at the end they play hits and in the middle they like do rubbish that you don't care about. I did not think this I, was going to be the decisive film. I thought it was going to be rubbish. I thought this was going to be... just want a boring conversation. <laughs> uh, right, Callum, what are you thinking? Um, David's thinking four... I'm torn between third and fourth. What are you thinking? I would say third because I think it's better than Happy Death Day, but I, I can be persuaded. Like I I feel like you should have a deciding vote, Brad, whether it's better or worse than Happy and Death Day. And to me also, you're then, it's just brushing Wayne's World, which you've then also said is not as good as this <laughs> Mission Impossible but, 6. You know what? Okay. So it's it's going... brushing that, and I don't think it is brushing that. I think it's a competent movie. I think it's definitely not bad but it's not like incredible it's just and it nearly was which is disappointing i think it's just in that middle honestly thought this was going to go straight to number one it'd be the easiest conversation that we've had and you know when callum said oh he's i'm not sure what david thinks of this movie because he kind of teased that he's not a big fan of it and i'm like oh these comedians doing comedic (laughs) things um he said we need some stinkers in there and i was like what i like so (laughs) (laughs) which i don't think is a stinker i just quite Callum, you've left it to me. You've left it to me. Um, I am putting it forth. And I'm putting it forth. And I'll tell you why. This whole conversation has been about how we didn't like something that happened in the middle. Granted, we both... Callum and I loved what happened at the beginning and at the end. It kind of, something in the middle just wasn't great. For me, Happy Death Day is such a a, a tight 90 minutes mm. that it never fell off for me. And it was a great ride. So, I would take consistency over like amazing bad amazing okay so and and happy death day is consistent and now david's going to go away watch happy death day and be like oh well, <laughs> <better> than this. <laughs> i'm intrigued to watch happy death day and mission impossible six do i have to watch mission impossible watch no, no, four no, no. watch four five and then six you don't have to watch the first three the, the first three are trash no i think i've seen the first three i've definitely seen the first two right but the third one's jj abrams so Anyway, Man's right. Good. That's 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 the list. That's that's what it is. Down, um, let's go and take a look at the final scores for. This Callum one. sounds oh, distinctly sadder now. Yeah, he's, he's not happy. Distinctly <laughs> more beaten up. I can't believe okay. that Soul went from number one to number four, basically <laughs> in our heads. <laughs> I mean, I can't. You've ruined that film for me. I genuinely think you've Great. ruined that film. Great. This is why you shouldn't discuss films with me. Please get me back on this podcast. <laughs> it's wonderful that we're doing this. But two episodes into the series, Callum's there, like, why do we have guests? <laughs> <laughs> we should get. But what did you want? Did you want me just to come on and agree with you completely? That's Wouldn't why he has me here. <laughs> we're definitely not have been as interesting. I think it's more just <laughs> ruined my favourite film of the year now. I think. <laughs> And I'm more just. Should it have been your favorite? I feel like you should have higher standards. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) We'll move. We'll move on to the third and final film of the day: Um, Batman and Robin. Who wants to take this one first? Um, I'll I'll take it. Go on. (laughs) 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 So I'm not going to pitch that it's better than Soul. Okay, just to get this out of the way. But um, I saw. I saw these four kind of like 80s-ish Batman films for the first time last year in a cinema back to back. So that was, yeah, the, t- the Tim Burton ones followed by the... Go uh, on, David. Oh, Schumacher. In the cinema? Yeah, they re-released them in the cinema back to back and we spent all day watching them for the first time. It was an experience. This mm. was the best one out of the four. It's so... <laughs> it's so... It's literally... I enjoyed this film the most out of all four of them. Like, Tim Burns got his all fancy kind of like, oh, I'm an author. Look at me doing fancy stuff. <laughs> this is just pure cheesy fun. This is like Fantastic Four levels of fun. Like, it's, it's got the bat nips. I mean, the bat nips are like now historic 
It's just, it's so much fun. Like Poison Ivy's in this one, right? It's all just, oh, mm. and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's in it. He's, he's literally got the best lines. We talk about those lines every single, oh, it's so yeah, good. 60 seconds is out. You never, we, we never get to know what those great lines are. Um, <laughs> go on, Brad. Go on, Brad. You do. Okay. You go. Right. You go. Um, I ironically <laughs> like this movie too. I wasn't expecting this to happen. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, no, <laughs> out of the four that, out of the four that we watched, I laugh at this movie. I wouldn't say I like it. I can have a good time with it, but I definitely laugh mm. at the movie. If we're talking about ranking movies that I think are actually good, not how much we laughed at it, because the room's not going to be at the top of the list, is it? We can have fun with it, but it's not a great movie. Why? This isn't a, a great movie. Um, the Batman Forever is a completely different conversation. That movie is so underloved, it's unbelievable. This movie is is it's fun, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, is it better than Ready Player One? Actually, yeah, probably. Um, but it's <laughs> um, but it's it's not gonna go high up the list, is it? But it's you can have fun with it. I think it's the right level of bad movie that you can enjoy it. David. <laughs> I am flabbergasted. I thought I was going to be like, yeah, it's fun, and you two were just going to be shitting on this. Okay, right, let's go. I'm a big fan of uh, terrible movies. I have met Tommy Wiseau twice. I love watching to Troll 2. I love Samurai Cop. I love so many awful films, and I watched this film with the hope of it being a great bad movie, and it's just a big cash cow. It's like watching money burn on screen, basically. <laughs> It's just like watching a big action figure advert and along the way it is fun to laugh at but it's not made with the same, get this word, soul as <laughs> The Room and Troll 2 where somebody just thought they were making an excellent film and they weren't which is the best kind of bad movie to me. It's a cash crab. It's kind of fun to watch. There's that bit in the middle, I was watching it with my friends and there's just a bit with a bike chase and I turned to my friend to be like, what is going on? He was literally reading a comic book being like, I'm not interested. But... <laughs> I'm saying low, but not very low. Okay, so I think I think we kind of know. So if, if you look at the list, I think we're basically pitching below Salt, right? We're basically pitching for it to be fifth, sixth, or seventh, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Well, it's definitely not it, better than Midsummer. I mean, I'm, I'm not <laughs> that, but it's, I'm Midsummer going a number movie. one on this one, folks. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> yes, I... <sighs> I've not seen Ready Player One, but I'm imagining it's... I guess from what I've heard from people that Ready Player One, everyone was excited for it and it's kind of a bit disappointing. Whereas this, you're not going into it being like, where's my Batman that I want? You're going into it being like, they've taken this dark franchise and made it for children and made, like, apparently they were just going up to Joel Schumacher with a toy <laughs> and going, put put this in the film, please. <laughs> I mean, and yeah, like... like I think the reason why I enjoy this film so much is that because I didn't see it until last year, I basically, like, it's been really moody superhero films, like, especially with Batman. Like, you've obviously got no Nolan's trilogy, and then you've got the upcoming um, The Batman movie, which looks even, well, yeah, looks very dark. And this was just a complete change of tone, where it was just, like, basically just having fun. And obviously, yes. because I'd never seen that, I really, really enjoyed that. Like, I, I think it's above Ready Player One, because... We talked about it in the last episode, Ready Player One. People kind of forgot about it the year it came out. Like, nobody's even talking mm. about that film anymore, really. I feel like people are going to be talking about Batman and Robin 50 uh, years after the film comes out. Like, I love that this isn't going me. to end up at the bottom. This is great. <laughs> I, and also, Callum, just to say to your... Sorry, Brad, just, just, no. just for the one point that Callum was saying. I grew up I with Batman Forever and Batman and Robin were like at the age when I was a child and it was very, very exciting and I was very into Batman. You can see a picture of me. I'll send it to you of uh, me as dressed as a pirate when I'm like three or four with Batman slippers. And I was very much about like this kind of Batman thing. And the whole thing about Christopher Nolan's Batman was it was like, what if it's not campy and weird? What if it is dark? But you're just used to that. <laughs> yeah. And so it's so weird to hear you coming from the opposite angle and being like, oh, I didn't know Batman could be fun. And I'm like... <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> yeah, like Batman Sorry. in my head was only like the Arkham games and the Nolan films. So coming into this, it was kind of like, wow, this has basically been flipped on its head. So I'm I'm actually with with David on this. This when I watched this when I was just a kid, it was one of the first, probably the first um, VHS that I I owned, <laughs> and I I wore it out so much that I had to get a replacement one. 
uh, and I had <laughs> with Batman Forever, I had the video game and everything because to me, I grew up with thinking that comics were these big, bright, brash, magnificent neon things that, you know, it, it's just so out of this world and campy and great that I actively didn't like the Tim Burton Batman movies until I, I grew up <laughs> to to enjoy film a bit more um but before i cared about film and all i cared about was entertainment i grew up with this as george Clooney was my batman <laughs> <laughs> you poor but it's like having george lazenby as your james bond oh um, but that's, that's not to say that it's uh, it's a particularly great movie i mean it's nostalgia uh, for me uh hmm. it's um you know it is it is fun it's it probably knows what it is and what it is like you said david is a cash cow um it doesn't try it's a to cash be cow. other than that um, it's definitely not up there with Midsummer. It's not. Midsummer <laughs> is a good movie that people cared about making. Um, mm. Ready Player One, I think they just dropped the ball on it. Um, mm. And Hubie Halloween is actively a bad movie. It's, um, not, it's not even a good bad movie. It's just bad. No, but Batman and Robin is a good bad movie. Like I, I, I or is it the worst bad movie? I don't know. I, but it's it's the worst <laughs> bad movie. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined my brain there. Yeah, no. It's, okay. Yeah. It's um, definitely oh. better than Hubie Halloween. So is, is it yeah. better or worse? I, I, I think we're all in agreement here about where it's going to end up. But okay. above I or need... below Ready Player One? That's what we need to work out. I'm going to say above, I'm but say that's above. because yeah, that's, that's it probably. doesn't look to me like Ready Player One is just full of um, horrific puns being delivered by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like that cast is amazing. And I'm all for films where there's it's how do i word this i really like seeing films where at some point somebody had to go what why are we doing this like what is going on like how many people are involved with making a film and it just sort of trundled along and then got to the point where they bash their feet together and ice skates sort of just appear <laughs> out of their feet and that makes no sense and They've all got a weird made up disease and all the passwords are like three letters long. Obviously. And it was just basically let's just it's 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 it, they've just took all the famous people in the world and put them in a film without actually vetting them for like whether they would be either A good actors <laughs> and B gel well at all. There's like no chemistry between any of them. Um and all of that is just makes for this baffling mess. It, it, it's, it's like pouring a bunch of different like fizzy drinks into a big bowl, <laughs> and you taste it, and you get insane sugar rush, and you're like, that is a bizarre flavour, but it's not necessarily a great flavour, but it's definitely you, it's interesting. Not awful. Yeah. But it's... that's exactly what we used to do as kids. You know, you used to go into Burger King, just chuck in all the all the all the fizzy drinks and have that. Is it rubbish? Yeah, but you drink it all. You know, because you know, you drink it all. I'll I'll end with this. It goes above Ready Player One, okay? Because Spielberg made Ready Player One. Spielberg could not make a film like Batman and Robin. <laughs> it, it, he could... It's not wrong. It's not wrong that statement. <laughs> He, he couldn't make a film. <laughs> it's a very know. good argument, but I, I, yeah, I think we're all in agreement here. I think that's okay. that's fine. But so we, I would not put this in the same league as anything that was made with pure passion and ends up no. as bad. But we're, put, but we're putting it too below soul. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. fine, fine. Okay, let's go and look at this um, f final rankings for this. Let's episode. go look at this travesty. Okay. Should we read through them? Yeah. So okay. <laughs> Well, so number one, I'm actually beating Callum down. We'll, we'll, we'll go from eight to one. Uh, at the bottom, we have Hubie Halloween. Uh, number seven, we have Ready Player One. Next up list, we've got Batman and Robin. Then we've got Midsummer, and number four, we've got Soul. Um, still can't quite believe that. Uh, at number three, we have Happy Death Day. At number two, we have Wayne's World, and at number one, we have Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, as we said in the first video, Callum, um, there's definitely a gulf, I think, in the the top one or two films compared to the rest of the list. Uh, Wayne's World and Mission Impossible is it shouldn't just be a few places above Batman and Robin. As we get more and more films, that gulf will. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's my lighting, or whether David's take on Souls actually made me go like a beetroot, but <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gone. Purple. You were rubbing your face. I think it is partly your lighting, oh, okay. but it's also just my ability to 
find <laughs> what you didn't realize you didn't like and then bring yeah. it out in you <laughs> <laughs> this has been an experience thanks for coming on david uh, oh, really this has been it. an ultimate pleasure of mine this is great <laughs> Um, I'll, ha- I'll happily come back. <laughs> yeah. like you can wrap up because I'm tired now. Yeah, um, David, do you have anything to plug to our three followers? Um, yes. Uh, if you go to twitch.com forward slash David Hall lol, uh, I do streaming on there. I do a thing called Ambient Lego on Fridays at 3 p.m. where I build Lego whilst playing ambient music and it's very relaxed. Try and channel my inner Bob Ross. Um, and then I guess if you know about Callum you know about the infinite sofa and then by osmosis chops Um, yeah and then if you look up David Hoare on your favourite streaming platforms there is a couple of musical comedy albums on there which I have made lovely stuff so yeah (laughs) David thank you very much for um, for coming on I'm sure we'll have you on again I'm a bit worried about what you'll do with the power to move a film (laughs) up or down the list Um, but we we'll need to, that bridge when we come to it. We need to stack that list to make sure there's a massive gap between one and two by the time he gets on. Sure. sure. <laughs> but yeah. well, thank you very much. Until next time, this has been Callum, David, and Brad. Thanks Bye. for joining us. <laughs>